Well, first of all, it was an opportunity for me to come and stand in solidarity with a community that has been uh, at the brunt of sectarian attacks over the course of the last four or five weeks, and indeed for many decades. And uh, it was a, an opportunity just to speak at first hand with uh, people who were directly affected by the events of last Saturday, which was one of the most frightening experiences that this community has ever uh, known. And to go into people's houses, uh, see the conditions in which they have to live, to hear their stories about the petrol bombs being thrown from the New Newton Art Road right into their gardens, some falling beside oil tanks. It must have been a very, very frightening experience, particularly for people who were elderly. Uh, I spoke to uh, one pensioner who was looking after three grandchildren, all under the age of 10 years of age. And that was a very frightening experience for her and for them also. So the message is very, very clear. These protests have to stop. The violence has to stop. The sectarianism has to end. And people need to call a spade a spade. Those people who are out there uh, and inflicting this violence on communities like this are British National Front type people. They are sectarian bigots. And there are elements within the UVF led by drug pushers who have been at the cold face of the violence in East Belfast over the course of the last number of weeks. One of the most dangerous incidents that happened here was the uh, attempted murder of a young policewoman outside Naomi Long's office. I regard people who throw petrol bombs towards bungalows like this with pensioners in it also as attempted murder and has to be unreservedly condemned. Now, Martin McGuinness, Deputy First Minister, and to show solidarity with the residents of mm. Tradgar. How important is it for the residents to see Jerry and Martin in? I think it's vital that the residents see that clear national support from the leadership of Sinn Féin. We had Jerry Adams in immediately after Saturday's incursion into the area and attacks on homes at the Albert Bridge Road, and immediately after uh, another attack here, a petrol bomb attack on the homes in Strand Walk, St Matthew's Court, and indeed uh, St Matthew's Chapel. So this is a great lift for people. Uh, I think it's in stark contrast to the lack uh, of leadership seemingly within the unionist and loyalist community. Certainly uh, this is the constituency of Peter Robinson uh, and I noted with interest some of the questions being asked of the Deputy First Minister uh, this morning. Martin McGuinness shouldn't have to ask Peter Robinson to come into the Short Strand to visit people, uh, pensioners, uh, people with disabilities, special needs children who had to be evacuated from the local parish hall. That's the reality of life uh, for people in Peter Robinson's constituency. People with grills on their windows right around their house, people having to live with fire extinguishers at their backyard, we have had to install uh, a fireman's hose out the front of these houses for, for their protection and for their reassurance. That's the reality for people on the ground here in the Short Strand. Now in saying all that, are people hopeful? Are people behind us? Are people passionate about sustaining the peace? Yes they are. Nobody knows uh, better than these people right across the board, across the interface here, how volatile uh, that peace can be and how vital and how important for them and their families that that peace is. I mean, this is a community which has had to endure this type of abuse for decades, really. And certainly in the last number of years, um, we have had a number of attacks on this area. And of course, you do have the constant parading uh, back and forth around this area. Uh, we had the Covenant parades last year, which led to like four hour parades going past this area. And that is a lot of attention. And a lot of tension builds up because then you have to have a very heavy police presence. You have thousands of uh, protesters or marchers, parades, call them what you will from time to time, passing around this area. A lot of that ends up in some type of uh, violent disorder. Um, and so therefore this community has had to uh, learn how to cope. But it's very difficult for them because they do see themselves very vulnerable. And we, we must remember this is a small Catholic enclave at the entrance to East Belfast, which is a very, very solid unionist and loyalist uh, community and, and constituency. So this is a small community um, which has suffered for, for far too long. Um, and I think the, the fact that Martin McGuinness has been here today, Jerry Adams is here on Sunday to speak directly to those residents who have suffered, I think it's a very, very important message of solidarity to the community because a community which feels isolated and vulnerable needs to have shown uh, to them some degree of solidarity and respect. And that's what Martin McGuinness's visit is about today. Alex, you yourself have come in for some criticism for showing solidarity in a meaningful way with 
the resonance with your remarks about people being able to defend themselves. How do you feel about that criticism? Well, I mean, my remarks have been exploited by some unionist politicians who, uh, you know, in my opinion, are just sounding more and more ridiculous because at the end of the day, I've made it very, very clear, uh, anyone whose home is under attack has the right to defend their home. Uh, and that has something that is something which has to be stated very, very loud and clear. And I think that it has been uh, a message well received by people within this community because they know that they have had to do that for far too long themselves. Alex Massey, you're a minimum of it. Okay. Well, thanks for, for being here. Uh, this was an opportunity for me to come along to the Short Strand to stand in solidarity with what is a, a small, uh, isolated but very proud uh, Catholic community. A community that has uh, borne the brunt of sectarianism over the course of the last number of weeks. Sectarianism that emanates from illegal protests and from violence on the streets. So I think it's hugely important that communities like this are protected. And that's why I went along to meet with uh, Matt Baggett on Tuesday to articulate my sense that the people of the Short Strand were let down. And to be fair to Matt Baggett, he has apologised to the people of the Short Strand. So I hope Matt doesn't have to apologise twice. I hope that there will be a, a recognition that everything needs to be done to ensure that the agenda of those who are ill-disposed towards the peace process uh, doesn't have its way and certainly doesn't have their way in relation to what is a clear strategy over the course of the last short while of trying to bring their uh, misdeeds to interface areas which as we all know is a very very dangerous uh, situation and one that has to be avoided at all costs. Police have a huge duty and responsibility to uh, deal with that. Can, can I also say that there's a huge responsibility on all political leaders to be seen to stand together against the protests and against the violence that emanates from these protests. Uh, I stood with Peter Robinson and uh, Hugh Ord in the aftermath of the murder of two soldiers at Antrim. Uh, I stood with Matt Baggett in the aftermath of other killings and with Peter Robinson. All of the political leaders in the Assembly need to be speaking with one voice and that voice needs to articulate a very clear message that we understand what is happening out there on the streets. We understand that we are faced with opposition from a combination of National Front type characters, sectarian bigots and elements within the UVF and East Belfast led effectively by two drug pushers who have been at the cold face of the violence in recent times. And my information around the attack on the young policewoman who was attacked with petrol bombs outside Naomi Long's office is that that attack was carried out by a unit of the UVF in East Belfast which is led by these two drug pushers. If that doesn't represent uh, a, a responsibility for political leaders to come together and they face that down, to face down the sectarianism that's been inflicted on our people in the streets, I don't know what is. The other aspect of this is the role of the police. And during the course of my conversation with Matt Baggett, I made it absolutely clear that people wanted to see those people who were flagrantly breaking the law in terms of the protests and the violence which are emanating from the protests brought before the courts and brought before the courts in huge numbers. So we need to see resolute action from political leaders and we need to see resolute action from the police. And we need to send a very clear message to those anti-democratic forces that are out there. And they're not all just on the unionist or the loyalist side. I'm conscious of the fact that in the course of the last couple of weeks that people who call themselves so-called Republicans thought it was a good idea to put an undercar booby trap device under the car of a police officer which could have killed not just him but his family also. So we all need to be, stand, to be seen to be standing together against these undemocratic forces, whether they be so-called Republicans or so-called Loyalists or Unionists. The last thing I want to say is this. I absolutely do not believe that these people who are protesting on the streets and who are involved in violence are in any way representative of the Unionist community. I believe the vast majority of Unionists, like the vast majority of Nationalists and Republicans, passionately support the peace process and want the peace process to succeed. 
So what we're dealing with here is a very, very tiny minority who have obviously shown themselves capable of catapulting themselves into the world headlines with a very negative message. These people have to be defeated, and the only way they can be defeated is by resolute action, by political leaders and by the police. Before Christmas, I convened a meeting of all of the party leaders in Stormont Castle, and I sought out of that meeting uh, a very strong condemnation of the violence and the protests uh, that were taking place. I wanted a very strong statement, and other party leaders also wanted a strong statement. We got a statement, but it wasn't a statement that I wanted. I spoke yesterday with all of the party leaders, including the First Minister, and I have again made it clear that we need to be seen to <coughs> stand together against these anti-democratic, violent forces that are on the streets. Now, we will see what transpires as a result of that conversation. Conversations will continu continue in the course of today, but one thing is absolutely for sure. We need to be seen to be given leadership. We need to be seen to stand together. We need to be seen to stand with the PSNI, and the PSNI need to be seen to standing with the community. How do they do that? They do that knowing that they have the full support of our executive, of political leaders, and they have our full support in bringing those people who have confronted our institutions, who have confronted our peace process over the course of the last number of weeks. Before the courts, they need to be arrested, brought before the courts, and if found guilty, they need to be imprisoned. What wasn't in the statement that you would have liked to be in that statement? From well, I just leave it at that. People can draw their own conclusions. Uh, my view all along has been that we need to be making it absolutely clear that we're opposed to the protests, that we want the protests to end, and that we unreservedly condemn the violence that has taken place on our streets. All right, folks. That's what we need to see. We need to see resolute action by political leaders. And we, ne we need the community to have confidence in their political leaders that they are standing together as we have stood together in the past. I have said to everybody at Stormont, what worked for us in the past whenever we, we were confronted by so-called violent Republicans <coughs> was the sight of us standing together in total unity against their violence. We need to see that happen on this occasion. Can I ask you before you go, because this was an issue that came up yesterday, the DUP aren't happy with Alex Maskey. They filed a complaint against him over his remarks about people in the short strand. It, he agrees that they should be able to defend their homes. What's your view on that? Because the, he's accused of breaching his code of conduct. Let me put it like this. If, God forbid, a police officer was killed tonight by so-called violent Republicans, I would unreservedly condemn it. And I have a call on anybody within the community with any scrap of information to give that information to the police. Some people who challenge Alec Maskey have a brass neck. I haven't heard one unionist politician over the course of the last five weeks mm. say what I've just said. I haven't heard them call on people to be arrested and I haven't heard them call on people with information about those involved in these violent riots to bring that information to the police. That's where the media need to focus their attention. Right, Thank, you. Thank you.